just just about live. Hey, great. Just a heads up. I went ahead and did our who should you follow Monday post. I saw it. Okay. And he tagged Thank it you. and reshared it. So yeah. Hey, what's the six tips of what? It's because then I'm gonna hit send and it'll it'll go live. Six tips for having a healthy, happy holidays. Okay. All right, we're live. Good. Hey guys, Josh Ortegan, Phenom Brand Fitness and Nutrition. We're glad you're making it and glad you're in here kind of seeing what we got going on. Uh, today we're going to talk about six tips for a happy and healthy holidays. I got Grayson and Matt with us and we're going to give them a chance to kind of introduce themselves. Uh, as you know, we've kind of had Phenom Brand Fitness and Nutrition for about four years now. And, you know, our goal is to help the masses, right? We want to help general population people to look better, feel better, have better confidence and, and navigate their way through the fitness industry because uh, there's a lot of garbage out there and we want to be a kind of a navigator to help you see what helps and works with you, what you like, and kind of um, make it easier for you, make it less of a chore for you. So I'm going to kind of let Gray kind of talk a little bit about herself. Um, I'm going to make her talk about herself and, and, and for to brag on herself and Matt will do the same thing. And then we'll get into the six tips for a happy and healthy holidays. Perfect. All right. Hey guys, I'm Gray. I work with Matthew at IKR Fitness here in Columbia. That's our in-person training. And then I work with Josh as well with Phenom to do online training also here in Columbia. Um, I've been personal training for about two years now and we're getting started on our program, our holiday program. Um, so yeah, is that all the bragging you want? Yeah, that's all, that works for that. me. Follow her on Instagram too. Her Instagram content is unbelievable tons of followers it's great stuff it's fun stuff and it's not just fitness guys it's a lot of um lifestyle stuff that i think we miss right we don't need to be workout robots we also have lives and families and things like that and that's a lot of stuff matt matt kind of touches on too so i'll let him kind of follow up there yeah hey everybody matthew heading with ikr fitness owner and coach there um i have the uh pleasure of working with josh and now i've known him for a while and now ray and coaching day to day beside great um and been at this for about 12 years now, Army veteran, um, and uh, just absolutely want to help everybody try to figure out how to do this and stop that yo-yo right? and, and reach out to you, fix your mindset, uh, get you in a happy place there. Do follow Gray's content and Josh's because it's both incredible. Uh, mine is more mindset like Josh was just talking about, but we really just want to help usher you in um, and be your friend and hold your hand and usher you in through the holidays and into the 2021. So again, cool. Matthew Hedden uh, with IQR Fitness and ph &M. So today we're going to go over six tips for, I don't know why we picked six. I don't, I always know what people are like, well, why six? Well, I'm sure it could be two, three, five, could be 25. I could come up with, we could make this long and drawn out and you could be really bored after a couple of minutes and be like, I'm sick of your tips and <laughs> you can go shove your tips because there's just too many of them. Right. So Let's make this simple, okay? And, and I'm gonna credit Gray with putting a lot of this together because if you guys don't know Grayson, when she gets on a roll of content, open your email and get ready. Cause it's, it's never coming, ending. I love it, it's never, <laughs> I love it. It's great, it's great. It, it's, it motivates me to do better. So number one tip is make yourself a priority, right? Your movement and your rest matter. Light movement, light walking is always encouraged. The way I can, the way I use this is after that big meal, go for a walk. Do something daily during the holidays. It doesn't have to be an hour and a half gym session. It could be a 10 minute walk with your dog. It could be getting out into the sunlight, being active. Um, it's 10 minutes of silence, meditation, feel good, you know? So um, tip number one, movement matters, your rest matters, but also get out and do something every day. You guys wanna kind of touch on anything with that? I think getting yeah. out there and doing something every day is important during the holidays. Cause man, you take a couple of days of doing nothing turns into three days, five days, all of a sudden right. it's the whole season and you're getting back into this January 1st. Right. My biggest thing here with making yourself a priority is 
your family can be a little bit hectic during the holidays. And if you're like my family, you come from divorced parents. So you normally have two or three or four Thanksgivings and Christmases. So my biggest tip is to make yourself a priority and do something for yourself every single day because it makes your family a little bit more tolerable when you're mm. having to go to like four or five different holidays or be around a lot of different family members. So my biggest one, like Josh said, is going for a walk if I'm at home. Sometimes I don't have access to a gym or I don't have access to equipment. So walking is always the way. And then I do, I like to ride the car in silence for about 10 minutes or just spend 10 minutes by myself right when I get up before I actually go downstairs to see my entire family. Kind of just get my momentum going for the day. Great. Absolutely. You know, making yourself a priority, everybody that we work with, the first thing we ask them is what are your top five priorities in life? Not fitness, but life, because that's what matters. Um, and you need to be one of your own priorities or you're no good to anybody else. Um, mm -hmm. You want to be there. Holidays and family are stressful. Let's be real. There's a reason that um, the rate for um, uh, negative things with mental health skyrocket and this is the highest time of year so stop and remember that and, and being active giving yourself a little bit of grace and, and just moving a little bit taking the time for yourself doing a 15 minute workout even if you don't have an hour do 15 minutes which i believe goes into our next point mm -hmm. um really dad gun matters make an appointment with yourself and make yourself a priority um and if you're not then reach out and try to figure out how to make yourself one you know, a quote that I pay attention to all the time is treat yourself like somebody you're responsible for taking care of. I like that. And I like there's that. a lot of people, there's like a lot that. of people, that's a, that's a Jordan Peterson drop. If anybody wants to get lost on the internet with Jordan Peterson, but he says, treat yourself like you're somebody you're responsible for taking care of. And that hit home to me because a lot of people in the fitness industry, they're caregivers. How many people, you know, in the fitness industry work with people and they forget about themselves, right? They forget about their, their own health and their own wellness because they're focused so many on other people. Uh, second one, drop the all or nothing mindset. Matt touched on that, right? I get a lot of people and a lot of clients that say, well, I can't do my five day a week program and my typical stuff during the holidays. So I'm just going to drop everything, right? They don't know how to scale it down to two days, three days, because they're busy. You know, that's huge because that kills momentum. And that mindset of all or nothing is something I see with a lot of clients because they'll get on the internet and they'll get this incredible program that requires two hours of cardio a day, lifting five days a week, planning other meals, eating six small meals a day. But man, I don't know anybody that manages that lifestyle. And that's, this is a really good point. It's not, it doesn't always take hundred percent effort. It doesn't take hour long workouts. It could do 30 minutes. It could be a 15 minute walk. Do what's attainable during the holidays each day with a busy schedule and just do something. The all or nothing attitude, I think, that's why a lot of people drop out of fitness after three, four, five months. That's why people have rebounds. That's why people lose 30 and gain 40, right? Touch okay. on that a little bit. Yeah. So Matthew and I actually talk about this a lot, and that would be setting your minimums. And I think it's especially important to set your minimums during the holidays, just because it is a little bit more hectic. You might not have as much access to a gym or to equipment or whatever it may be. So Matthew has really helped me with this and like putting this into my head is setting your minimums for each week. So I know a good week for me is getting six workouts and it's not all strength training, but six days of like a dedicated workout. So my minimum is setting four because I know I can still have a really good week. If I set four, I'm still on top of my game. I feel really good. You know, I'm not going backwards. Great. Same thing with your rest, same thing with your meals. You're setting your minimums for what you can and you're capable of doing each week. Absolutely. You know, uh, one thing we, we talk about all the time is maximize the minimum. And what does that mean? Well, you know, people say, well, this is my goal. My goal during the holiday is to work out five days a week. Yo, let's be real. <laughs> that ain't gonna happen. So just no. figure out your minimum. Okay. Because that all or nothing mentality inevitably leads to nothing. Absolutely. And so no, I'm that good. Yeah, is, I agree. Yeah. That is the thing is, you know, you figure out, okay, well, it, you know, even if it's 30% of the time you would normally spend in the gym, or working out. Think about this, Josh. I know this touches your heart for sure. You can end up in the Hall of Fame in baseball for batting over 300 for a lifetime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Failing 70% so of the time makes you a winner. Yeah. So if you if you adopt that mentality going into into your fitness too and going, listen, I'm only gonna be able to do 30% of what I did. But if you just maximize that and you're real with yourself and say, hey, listen, all I have this week is two, and you manage to go three, you get a gold star. But if you say I'm gonna go five and you only go four, you failed. Yeah, I agree. Right. Number it's definitely three. like setting your mentality up for success versus failure. So it's like 
saying I'm better for doing 15 minutes than I'm better than doing zero minutes. Absolutely. 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 And, and it keeps the habit, right? Keeps yeah. the habit, you know? Um, number three, I'm going to leave it with a quote. And I paraphrase it, but um, the quote goes something like this. Human beings have an almost infinite capacity at taking things for granted, right? And number three is nothing is a chore. Changing your mindset from ha having to do things to I get to do things, right? I don't have to go to the gym. I get to go to the gym. That, that, that self-talk, and that self-talk matters. How many, people, how many people do you know that have negative self-talk? I'm never going to get in shape. Everyone. You know, Joe Rogan has that, calls it that uh, I can't catch a break guy. Yeah. Right. I don't want to be around that. I can't catch a break guy. I can't right. stand that guy. That mindset yeah. kills me. Right. I, I just can't touch, catch a break, man. Mm -hmm. Being around those people, man, it bums you out. It's draining. And yeah. listen, I'm not talking about not being realistic. Right. I'm a realist. Right. Some people are never going to get in shape. That's because they're not going to do the things they need to do. Right. But nothing is a chore. While we may drag helping, when we may drag, drag helping in the kitchen, cleaning the dishes or working out. Remember, it is never something we have to do. I get to spend time with my family. I get to, you know, work out. Uh, I get to do things that make my life better. Um, we look at things as a chore. How many people you know look at fitness as a chore? Everybody. A lot of a lot. Of, everybody does. Everybody yeah. does. It's a it's a chore in the beginning. They hate it, but when they start seeing the success, it no longer becomes a chore, right? right. It becomes something they really enjoy doing. Touch on that mindset of changing it from I have to do it to I have the opportunity to do it. Yeah, this is a big one for me. And this is like probably what I push the most with my clients is transforming the, the mindset from, oh, I have to go to the gym after work to I get to go to the gym after work. Um, and for me, like the best example I can give you is cleaning your room. And so if you constantly drag cleaning your room, you're never going to have a clean room, right? You're always just going to mm. live in filth. Instead, when you change your mindset to, I deserve to live, work, sleep in a healthy and clean environment, then you're going to look at cleaning your room as something like, this is what I deserve. I should put in the work to clean my room so that I live in a healthy and clean space. Apply that same thing to your body. Like you are able to go to the gym. You are able to go for a walk. You are able to do so much with your body. So instead of looking at it like, oh, I have to do this, Look at it like I get to make myself better. I get to make myself succeed. I have to put in the work, you know, to succeed. Like this is something I'm able to do versus something I have to do. It really is. I mean, that, that's so good. And Josh, you're dropping all these quotes on us. Like, you know, you're like, <laughs> seriously, man. But, um, you know, and just to make it personal here. Um, so y'all know a little bit of who I am. And I know both of y'all know this, but there was a time where I didn't think I'd be able to walk without a limp. Um, where, you know, I was in the hospital where I couldn't move. Um, and it has been a struggle for the past 15 years. Um, and there are times where it's, it's just, you know, I'm like, yeah, this hurts, you know, blah, blah. I get to go to the gym now. I get to do those things when I didn't think I'd ever be able to. Um, hey, how many people right now because of COVID see the gym a completely different way? Mm -hmm. They get to go now because it's been mm -hmm. taken from them, right? Yeah. I mean, I get to order my stuff from Amazon now. Like if you'd have gone 10 years ago, there would have been no gym equipment in the stores and you wouldn't have had the opportunity. We have so many opportunities right now that we get to do these things. Um, you know, do I want to spend the next hour and a half in my kitchen cooking? Not terribly, but I get to do that because then I get to just throughout the rest of my week, have my food ready and not have to worry about it. Yeah. Yeah. There's such, such like a negative connotation around exercise and eating healthy because it's hard and people don't understand, you know, they, they'll see it and be like, I want a quick, easy fix on how to feel better, but they don't understand that the work is going to be the hard part. So there's a negative connotation around the two of them. But when you get into the habit of telling yourself, this makes me better. And when you actually start seeing the results of getting better that's when it comes full circle. And then that's when it is a priority. It becomes your non-negotiable. So like we said, our, our setting our minimums, like I don't miss going to the gym now. I have to go to the gym. That's my non-negotiable. So I've separated, it's a chore. I don't want to do it to, I love it. It's made me better. Look how far I've come. And now it's, it's, I have to do it. It's, I love to do it. It's my pride and joy. So one thing Matt knows, but, but Grayson doesn't know is like, 
I totally stalked Grayson in the gym for like six months. She had no clue who I was. <laughs> he totally not, did. I, I know. So it's it's kind of crazy, right? So I would watch her come in because I pay attention to people's habits, right? I pay attention to the gym, right? To, to people. I like to think I'm like the invisible man that sits in the corner, but I would watch her over six months come in, do a warm up, do a workout. And it's like little, her body slowly kind of got chipped away, like saran wrap. Like she slowly saran wrapped her body slowly, 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 slowly. And it was over a long period of time. It wasn't drastic, right? Yeah. But I noticed this person, I was like, who's this girl? Maybe, I don't know if you worked out a lot before, but you were consistent. And then I saw you talking to Matt, I said, Matt, who's that? <laughs> like over the last six months, she's slowly changed her body. It's not been drastic. Like what's her story? Like what's her weight loss? Like what's her story, right? Cause I thought it could be beneficial for people. So just so you know, Gray, I stalked you for like six months. Yeah, That's okay. But, to, I mean, I don't know where you live or nothing. Punch, I don't know. I don't know where you live or nothing, but it's not weird. Number <laughs> yeah, four. Weird. Number four. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> I promise. Boring. I promise you later. Um, number four. So let's, we're getting into the tactical side. So at first we got into the mental side, right? So now we're getting in the tactical side. Make your meals nutrient dense. Okay. Where I use this tactic was I would load up my plate with turkey and green bean casserole. Now is green bean yeah. casserole just straight green beans? No, there's some garbage in it, right? But it's better than what the rest of it was served. I loaded myself up with vegetables and turkey, okay? And when I ate it, I didn't crave the other garbage, right? How many times, trust me, I wanted to go to the, the sweet potato casserole right away. I was like, give me a full plate of sweet potato casserole. I'll worry about the turkey later. I wanted to do that. But from a tactical standpoint, talk about filling your plate. You said right here, half veggies, half protein, and add some other things. Um, yeah. Counting your holiday cal calories is stressful. That's hard. Trust me. I am 100% unhealthy. And this is my, my thing, my, my own demon. I am 100% stressed out when I can't track. I've tracked 1,452 days in a row. And I, I mean, that's weird, right? Please don't obsessive compulse like I do. But I was <laughs> mindful of what I eat. Remember, it's okay to enjoy your food, which I did. Talk about the, the tactical side of having a nutritional dense plate. Because some people don't know what that means. Yeah, yeah. So I actually acquired the full plate rule from Jordan Syatt, who's Syatt Fitness on Instagram. Mm -hmm. um, he's great if you don't follow him. But basically, it's you have a full size dinner plate and you only get one plate. It's not like a huge tray. It's just a normal size plate. And you fill half of it with vegetables, a quarter of it with protein, and a quarter of it with whatever else you want. So that means that you're getting half a plate of entirely vegetables. You're getting a full-sized serving of protein, and then you get to have a little bit of fun in the bottom corner. Mm -hmm. um, that helps just because it's ensuring you get most of your vegetables and your protein, right? Another tactic I have for, especially the holidays, is if you do want those little bites of things, get little bites of it. So my, I have, I can't avoid the sweet potato casserole and I can't avoid the rice and gravy. Like I just, that's not gonna happen. And I'll be called out if I am. So I get like this big, it's like two or three bites of everything. So my entire plate looks uh, like, like a painter's wheel kind of, like it has okay. like different paint colors all over it, but just little bites of everything. But I still make sure that the protein and the vegetables are the biggest on the plate. That always helps me and it makes me be like okay well i got to have some i didn't completely cut it out um i don't track during the holidays i just make sure that protein and vegetables are the biggest things that i have your family's not going to look at you like you're a psychopath right i mean my yeah. grandmother would be like where is your sweet potato casserole <laughs> yeah. you know i never want my clients to be somebody that brings their food to thanksgiving dinner don't be that i had a client read this week go all right, when I go to Thanksgiving dinner, I'm going to bring my own food. I'm like, oh man, please don't be that person. I'm setting don't you up for failure. Offer, but offer help. So like I have a couple recipes that I know are a little bit healthier of the same thing. So I'll be like, why don't I make this? You guys already have a lot on your plate. Like I'll make this instead. And then I know yeah. it's just a little mm. bit healthier than how say my mom would make it with lots yeah, of yeah, oil. Yeah. Two sticks of butter. Yeah. 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 Matthew, what's your plate look like? Man, that... 
I load up. Um, I, I don't really like turkey too much. Um, so, but you know, I'll load it up, um, ham, stuff like that. And it is part of it. Um, my mom has become, for instance, very health conscious with some things that have gone on in her life and my dad's life through heart attacks and lupus and things like that. Oh, wow. Um, and so, you know, just making little switches, um, sweet potato casserole, we use stevia brown sugar, um, and, 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 and pecans. And she's like, I don't really need the candy. This it's sweet enough. Um, and it was, and so, yeah. you know, I was able to load up on that and not have any sort of quote unquote guilt, which is a whole different topic that we won't get into right now. Um, and, and loading up on the ham and the green bean casserole, but using, um, 98% or fat free cream of mushroom instead of the full thing. And it's still good, y'all. Like, listen, yeah. you can make those switches and it's still good and avoid the guilt and then also not feel like you're depriving yourself. That's one of the big things. Don't be that person that sits there and, and attaches a negative connotation to either the holidays or your nutrition. Back to that positive connotation. Here's the thing. That food is delicious. You know, yeah. we talk about it all the time. People are like, yo, green bean, green bean casserole. I love that stuff, right? Or pineapple casserole. I don't know if you've had it, but it's just sugar, butter, pineapple, cheese, and grits. Like it's fire. There is nothing healthy about this at all. But if you're like that food is bad, the food is not bad. It did not misbehave. Okay, you did yeah. not put it in the yeah. corner, except for Gray did put some of her stuff in the corner of the plate. But that's a whole, you know. <laughs> um, but just try to keep a positive outlook on it and just say I'm going to enjoy. But I would say that the key here is. Um, this is a talk we had. If you're going to, when you have those big meals, you're also going to have a tendency to, you know, wake up at your family's house and then have this massive breakfast and this massive lunch and this massive dinner. Do pace yourself a little bit there. Mm. That, yeah. that is the big one to me where it's like, you know, so well, let's have apps and it's just stand up and don't, especially listen, we're in the, I'm, I'm Southern. Okay. So our vegetables are not healthy. So that tip doesn't really work for us. They're bacon um, and they're worse yeah. for you than the bacon and ham. So, yeah. um, but is the apps and the pimento cheeses and all these other things and our grits, like, listen, by the time they're done, they're, you ate more calories that you didn't, you weren't cognizant of for my tip here would go along with nutrient dense, but would be try not to eat unless you're sitting down. Oh, that's a good one. Like so if you sit down, you're going to be a lot more mindful of what you're intaking because studies have actually shown that while you stand and eat, your brain doesn't really register it. Yeah, I like it. Number I five. Think, I, well, I was going to say, I think we should touch on alcohol here too, because I know. Yeah, we're going to. I got it. I got it on the list. Yeah. You got it later on? Okay. Yeah. Does yeah, that yeah. mean we drink while we do this podcast? No. Or I don't, yeah. Okay. No? Right. So number five, remember, it's okay to say no to things that don't align with your goals. Okay. And what happens here, what comes to mind here is people sabotage you, right? I have, I, I have a lot of women as clients who I feel whose husbands almost don't want them to be successful. Yeah. They, they come home and they bring the kids frosties and fries and they eat it in front of her and they challenge her and it's okay to say no to something that does not align with your goals. If somebody keeps wanting to force you food and give you food and like I grew up in a Hispanic family, food's everywhere. If you don't eat, grandma gets mad, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, and it's okay to say no to things that don't align your goals. It's kind of like, it's okay to say no, that you're not going to go to Black Friday shopping. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. It's okay to say no to extra stuff. You're not weird. Now, I don't want you to be that person that brings your own food. Like don't show up with a container full of like chicken and rice and, and green beans to a family dinner. Like you need to learn to manage those, those environments yourself, but it's okay to say no, you're not weird. Right. right. You're not different. It's just, you have some goals stick yeah. to those goals. Some people don't understand those goals and some people don't want you to reach your goals. Remember that sure. a lot of people want you to fail because that puts pressure on them. Why is, why do people not like it when you say no to the extra serving? Because then they feel like they have to say no and they don't like that. Right. Touch on that a little bit, Greg, touch a little bit on saying no to things that don't align with your goals. Yeah. So, and this is where that rule of like the painter's wheel looking plate applies to because then like my grandma is not going to get on to me for not grabbing something if I just have even a little bit of a bite of it. So that helps there. Um, but have a plan in place because a lot of people don't understand what you're doing. I don't have a single person in my family that is on the same path as I am. And they're not 
in any way discouraging of me. So I don't actually have those pressures, but they don't, their goals don't align with mine in any way. Like not mm -hmm. whatsoever. My, most of the people in my plate or in my family, their plates are like this big and they go mm -hmm. back for seconds and thirds and that's totally fine. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's about having a plan and positive family talk in place. Um, so being honest with what your goals are and telling your family, look, this is what I'm doing. This is what I'm after. You can support me if you want to, but these are my decisions. I'm old enough to make my decisions. And that is something that does not align with what I'm after. Matthew, what do you think? think? I think that's great. Um, I think a lot of times, and, and Josh, you know, um, I see that a lot, you know, this person sabotages me. Yeah, that's brutal. And, and, and that's a whole different talk, you know, that needs to be had. Um, Typically speaking, if you talk to the people that you love, your family, your extended family, things like that, and you let them know what your goals are and why, give them a why, why is it uh, uh, very important. Most of the time, if they really care about you, which I hope they do, um, they're going to support you in that and be proud of you. There are others that are going to sabotage you because like you said, if you go back to, you know, if you put um, one crab into a basket, he can get out. Okay, if you put two crabs in a basket, no lid, the other crab, as one tries to climb out, will grab the other one and pull him back in. <laughs> you ever been crabbing, Josh? Oh. You didn't know that? No, on, no, no, no. <laughs> so that is a real is thing. A you do not need a lid if there's more than one crab in a basket. And the wow. people around you typically are going to be the exact same way. Wow. Um, that's interesting. And, that's, an interesting that's an interesting analogy. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I yeah, love surround my yourself with like minded people, I guess, right? Surround yourself with like minded people. That's choose yeah. your circle. Yeah. Absolutely yeah. choose your circle. If you need a check in, Gray and I talk constantly. When we don't, that something seems off, even if it's just five minutes of picking up the phone. Mm -hmm. um, and if you need a check in, do it. You know, surround yourself with that circle. But like you said, with planning, the six P's that my dad's taught me forever proper planning prevents piss poor performance. Oh. Truth. Ouch. Stings. The big thing is, too, like, make sure that you're not looking down on your family members choices so you they can't <laughs> judge you just like you shouldn't <laughs> no, judge shame them. All of yes them. just because their goals shame don't align with yours doesn't mean that you should form their goals so like like i said i have a lot of big eaters in my family a lot of big drinkers in my family i can't judge them for what they want to do just like they can't judge me we are a family unit and it makes it a lot easier if you just love each other for what you want to do so I'm going to touch on number six, and then I'm going to go straight into some, some what I'm going to call overtime, some extra, extra ones that we did. Enjoy okay. yourself. Enjoy yourself with your family, right? That's what it's all about. Enjoy your time. Yeah. Enjoy yourself. Be with them. Be happy. You get to spend time with your family. I know some people, they feel like they have to spend time with your family. But, you know, if your family does have issues, be different than everybody else. Bring something positive to the table right? Enjoy right. your time with them. Some of the overtime that we're going to talk about. Moderation is key. It's not a whole month. It's not the holiday season. It's three days, right? It's Christmas, it's New Year's, and it's Thanksgiving. It's not 45 days of bliss. It's, it's only <laughs> three days, right? So many people turn this holiday season into just this decadence, right? It's only three days, you know? Um, limit alcohol intake. I talk a lot about alcohol, okay? I've, I've fought the battle of alcohol. I haven't had a drink in years. That's not a virtue signal. I'm not better than anybody. It's just something I've been able to stop doing and I don't really care about it. So my struggle isn't the same as a, a moderate drinker, but limit, limit in moderation. I put here, it's not, a, it's, not a, it's not a 30 day bender, right? It's not a 45 day holiday bender. And I know you got a lot of things. Limit alcohol. What do you guys got for tips for somebody to limit alcohol? Because I'm not, I couldn't, th th that's, you guys might this know more about it. This is where it gets fun. This is where it gets yeah. fun. Because we're very different on this. And I know Matthew and myself are, are what do we say? We're <laughs> recreational drinkers. I, sure. I enjoy alcohol very much. And I, I work at a bar on the weekend. So like, it's a big part of my life. Um, my biggest tips here are, do limit your alcohol and do treat it like just a normal week. So it's very easy to be like, I'm on vac vacation and I'm going to drink my life away and my family stresses me out and I just need a whole bottle of wine to myself. Mm -hmm. Do your best to just treat it like a normal week and treat it like your normal intake of alcohol. Might it be a little bit higher in calories during the holidays? Yes, because you're going to have like eggnog and like my, my uncle over the weekend made 
sangria. Like there's going to be lots of different things, but do your best to choose alcohol that's going to be lower in calories. This is where you can bring your own. So you can bring your own like Miller Lights or Michelob Ultras or whatever they may be in so that you do stay lower calorie. My favorite is vodka and water because it's literally just the calories of the vodka. Um, just watch yourself because it gets a little crazy if you drink too much. But um, you do need to still be on top of it like it is a normal week. But also remember like if you have a day where it's just one day of drinking a little bit too much, it's okay. Like just move on from it. Don't let yourself sit in your guilt. It is just one day. Absolutely. And, you know, I will touch on it. And, um, and our goal here, listen, we want to be real. We want to show you who we really are. Uh, Grayson knows this. She, we've had meetings where she's like, listen, I can't have a drink right now because then I'll just go down this path. Um, and for myself, moderation, I don't do it. I don't have it. It's not one of my traits. It's not a thing. Um, so for instance, I don't keep peanut butter in my house because I will eat a jar in like three days. Um, <laughs> I, I don't drink at home because that's not healthy for me. Um, if I have a drink, I will probably have five more. Um, so the thing is, is to me, the biggest tip here is not actually talking about the alcohol itself. It's understanding who you are and what your triggers are. Um, and understanding that if you do have one and you're around that cousin that you legitimately want to throat punch and the <laughs> alcohol may make you say something you don't want to say, you might want to steer away from it. Okay. And actually this goes back to the first one, go back into your movement and use that as a healthier stress relief. Great. If you're using it to enjoy your time, absolutely. Please go for it. Okay. One of the best sounds in the world is champagne popping. Like seriously, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a happy sound y'all, but you also need to understand that there are limits, you know, make those little things instead of doing um, the vodka cranberry, use vodka Mio. Um, for me, use gin and um, LaCroix instead of, you know, the full tonic, which it does little things add up. And this does goes back to the step-by-step, -step, the 1% better every day. Those little choices you make really, really do add up. And listen, I call, I give every holiday at least two days, right? So, you know, this, if there's three days and we give each one two days, so that's six out of 45 days, guys, that's only 13%. Mm. Mm. It's only 13%. Remember, we strive for 80, 20, 80% adherence. You got another 7% that you can give leeway. So again, give yourself grace and be honest and realistic yeah. with yourself. Yeah. That one in so, reverse, just set your maximum. So like Matthew said, if he has one drink, he'll have five more. I know for me, if I have three, I'll definitely have more. So I have to have two and be done with it. Done. So the last three I got on here, and then I kind of want to get to the big conversation we're having for what's coming up in January. And I'll just skim through these plan for big meals. If you're going to have a big meal on a Friday night, limit your calories Friday during the day. Okay. You're not crazy. If you don't eat and drink like everybody else, you're not, you're not, you're, you're, you're it's okay to not follow the crowd and keep exercising. The gyms are only really closed for three or four days, right? right. They're not, they're not closed for the whole month, right? This, you know, this, this, it's not a month long gym closed type thing. And gyms being closed is not an excuse. You have so much to work with at home, mm -hmm. outside, water bottles, anything like that. Your gym being closed is not an excuse. We just went through two months. Of yeah, gym. we just went through it. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So I mean, the, I'll tell you in the army, 90% of what we did was body weight. I mean, come on. Sure. Um, yeah, that's not an excuse. You can do something on Christmas day. Right. Yeah. You know, I, I know, I know in, in, in the Phenom fitness group, we have a free home workout guide. If you guys want it, it's free, have it. So the big conversation, what we're all planning, um, Grayson, because I always mess this up. What's the name of our challenge that we're launching January 4th? The challenge that we're launching on January 4th is the Phenom brand fitness comeback challenge. Great. And we're coming back from holidays. We're coming back from quarantine. We're coming back from all kinds of craziness. That's what the world is coming back. You might be coming back from something specific, right? You might be coming back from a set, setback somewhere. So I'm gonna go over a little bit of what the challenge is gonna entail. It's a six week challenge, right? And you guys can jump in on this, right? What it includes is January 4th through February 13th, Saturday, February 13th, it's six weeks. We're going to have gym and home version workouts. We'll have men and women's version. Um, 
quick note on that. It's not like women and men need to exactly change how they train, but some women have different goals, right? Like, you know, guys want big arms. They want to get big and look big and, and be the meathead, right? <laughs> you know, for girls, the booty is the new biceps, right? Like every girl right. wants a booty, right? Um, workouts will be provided, resistance training, core, cardio, mobility plans included. Guys, we're going to be really active in this. And we, we have a, your own private face group for it. We're going to have exercise videos. If you don't know how to do an exercise, listen, here's what I do know about the three people in this call. They're accessible. If you put something into the challenge and you're like, I don't know how to do this exercise. You'll probably have like a bunch of videos in a couple minutes, right? We're going to do weekly Facebook lives. Uh, we're going to personalize your macros and your calorie intake, right? For each person that comes in, um, fill in the biofeedback tracker. Great. High five and tag you into the biofeedback tracker. What is yeah. it? Yeah, so I can actually pull it up what it looks like on here. But basically what it is, is just keeping a daily reflection of what you're doing. So your calorie intake, your macros will be broken down, your sleep, your water intake, if you want to list your water intake, what kind of workout you did that day. It really just is a way for you to keep accountable. Um, a lot of my clients have a lot of success with it because, again, it is their daily reflection. So it's like a daily journal for them. Um, but let me get it pulled up here. And I can kind of show you if you guys can see it. So you'll have each day of the week and then you'll have everything broken okay. down there for you. Measurements will be in there so, too. So it's And you can do optional, walking steps, right? Walking What's steps, that? all that kind of stuff. Yes, walking steps, all that's on there. there. People like that, yeah, right? Some people it. like to track, okay? We'll yeah. show people how to use your favorite calorie tracker, whether it's my fitness pal, mm -hmm. whatever it is. We'll have food lists. We're, listen, I got clients that don't know what foods have protein in it. Seriously, right? Happens. Um, yeah. We're going to do weekly progress picks, measurements with check-ins, private, private Facebook group, and we're going to have grand prizes, right? First, second, and third prizes. We'll launch all that in the group. I'm fired up about this because yeah. so many people want to come off the holiday and have something to strive for with other people. Listen, culture matters, Right. Education is not our problem in the fitness industry. We all know what to do. It's having somebody lead by example, which hopefully is us, right? Other people in the group and creating a culture, a positive culture of common people striving to reach the same goal, which is better their health. That excites me. That fires me up. This is a challenge. All right. We will get more information to you about this challenge. It's 97 bucks. Okay. It's $97 for six weeks of improving your health. We will probably bring other coaches in. We'll have other names in here. We'll have other people in here. This is a group. This is not Josh's challenge. This is not Gray's challenge. It's not Matt's challenge. This is your challenge. If you want to be surrounded by people who, listen, it takes very little encouragement to push somebody into success. Very little. Somebody needs a good job. Somebody needs a pat on the, on the back. Somebody needs somebody to tell them they can do it. Somebody needs someone to tell them it's not, and it's not unattainable. It takes very little encouragement for somebody to seek success, right? This is the challenge for you. This is the Facebook challenge for you. We will be in there helping everybody. Guys, give me a little bit of something about what you're excited about with this challenge and, and something that will motivate somebody to come in here, spend $97 of their hard-earned money, and why... You really can't put a price tag on health. Talk a little bit about what excites you about this. Yeah. So uh, biggest thing that excites me is I, I do challenges pretty much every eight weeks and it just brings something new to the table. Um, obviously, I know how to program my own workouts. I do it for a living, but it teaches me more about other styles of coaching or about new exercises, new ways to program. So there's always something new in each challenge that I learn or that I do. The challenge that I'm in right now is kicking my butt. I have never been so sore in my life, but it's just fun and it's exciting. And you get a really big community around you of like-minded people that are after their health, that make mm -hmm. their health their priority. Great. Matt, what do you think? Man, I, just listening to you talk, man, I got fired up. I feel like I just watched the movie 300. Like I seriously <laughs> just want to like almost flip my own table, dude. And was I'll like, come it. on, let's burn this place down. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to use the real quote, but uh, yeah. I censored myself a little bit. I mean, honestly, here's the thing. 
I would hope that if listening to y'all speak gets me this fired up and I had some idea of what you were already going to say, that it's going to reach other people. Like, I feel like I'm about to get into my sham wow mode real quick. But here's the thing. It is it's it is choose your circle and we're going to surround each other. And it's not, it is your challenge. But here's the thing. We get every bit as much out of this as y'all do. And that's what stokes me up is it's Gray motivates me every day. Josh, Gray, we talk almost every day. It pushes us. And if we need it as coaches and people that have been in this industry for a long time to watch y'all come into it and be a part of our family to do this stuff, that's what gets me fired up. It's not this new year, new me crap. You're awesome already. <laughs> new year, okay. new me. Wow. I hate, yeah, that. I hate that. Listen, I hate it. it's yeah. not a new you. Yeah. You're the same person. You're just going to fulfill your potential. And that's what gets me excited about it. Great. Yeah. Well, guys, that's our call. I hope we didn't over talk. I think we te- stepped on some good things you can do for the holidays to not be that person. You know, the average person gains seven pounds during the holidays, right? To me, that means somebody's gaining zero and somebody's gaining 14, right? When I hear like averages, right? That means somebody lost seven and somebody gained 21 when you talk about stuff like that. Um, I hope this gives you guys some tools to limit damage during the holidays, to keep, keep consistency, to stay in the gym, to be mindful of what we put in our minds, our brains, our bodies, our mouths, right? And I hope this challenge fires you up, okay? It fires me up. I'm excited. Listen, I get emails from Gray on a Friday night at 10 o'clock at night. I know she's excited, right? I'm excited. Matt's excited. We will give you more information on this challenge in the group. Trust me, it's coming. We got a month to get it out there. January 4th is the new challenge. And uh, we thank everybody for listening. And we look forward to... uh, really working with you guys, not separate, but with you guys. So we'll all talk soon. Thank you.